Hey folks, I'm your host, Chris Caraggio. Welcome to yet another Leading in the Moment podcast where uh, we deal with members of our community as they're going through efforts and issues regarding the uh, COVID-19 pandemic we're all in right now. And our Leading in the Moment guest today is Stephanie Parra. She is the Governing Board President of the Phoenix Union High School District. Stephanie, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. You got it. Okay, so before we even get started, what 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 area of the valley pretty much are we talking about when you're talking about your district? Sure. So Phoenix Union High School District encompasses 220 square miles of Phoenix. Um, so we're as, as uh, far west as 75th Avenue um, and as far east as um, 40th Street. Um, and then we go down to South Phoenix and up to North Central Phoenix. So we're, we're a big chunk of the valley. Um, and we are the Phoenix Union High School District, so we have over 20 high schools, um, but we do have 13 elementary partner districts. Um, those are K-8 uh, school districts that feed into us. Okay. And, and what, over 75 charter schools are also in our, oh, our okay. as well. And, mm -hmm. and, and just and ballpark this next question, just so we kind of set up what, what you're dealing with right now, what percentage in your district would be considered low income or close to low income families? Sure. So we at Phoenix Union have uh, nearly 90% of our population of students are on uh, what we call free and reduced price lunch, um, which is a, a national meal program uh, that through the federal government that gives us our, our title $1 um, as resources to provide free meals to our students um, and so with that uh, kind of a population at Phoenix Union, we're able to offer both breakfast and lunch um, as uh, free meals to all of our students who, who are on our campuses. Okay, so, but when, when the governor last month closed down all the schools, um, let's talk quick first about, since you, you brought up the, the meals, uh, breakfast and lunch, how are you getting those meals to these needy families? Sure. So we continue. We have uh, incredible, incredible staff at Phoenix Union who are um, absolutely dedicated to serving our community um, and making sure that our students and their families don't go without uh, during this time of crisis. And so our, our teams, um, uh, up until now, all of our uh, uh, 18 campuses have been um, offering the uh, breakfast and meal programs from about 8 a.m. Um, till about noon, or excuse me, 10 to noon. Um, and um, that gives the families a one kind of a, a one time uh, in the day that they could come down and pick up both, both grab and go meals. Um, but we do have staff that are dedicated uh, to that. As the weeks go on, uh, we are kind of reevaluating um, with our, our staff, making sure that we keep them safe as well uh, through all of this. I think that's, that, that is what um, our team is trying to balance, is making sure that, um, one, our community continues to have their needs met, but two, that we, of, of course, ensure the safety and health of our employees as well while we're executing this. Um, but through, you know, the CDC guidance um, and social distancing measures, uh, we've been able to do kind of like a curbside grab-and-go style uh, pickup for the meal program up until and, now. And, and where did you say how many how many schools are actually doing that? Each and every school in the district is is doing that pickup curbside pickup type thing. Yeah, right now all of our campuses are. Um, so we have um, eighteen on site. Um, we might be scaling that back. Um, as the virus continues to spread in our community, um, that um, might need to be tightened up a little bit more to just to ensure safety of the community. Um, but for now, we are we still have all um, 18 sites going. Yeah, it's it's all about adjustment right now. Absolutely, for all of us in, monitor in this and adjust, and and teachers know that language. <laughs> yes, definitely. It's daily monitor and adjust. <laughs> okay. Um, Let's let's switch now to the actual education part of this. Now, a lot of students, um, you know, it's no big deal. They have a computer just like this. 
they, they have their little syllabus, their new syllabus where they go online and they just get all their classes and everything is, you know, it's a little odd, but they get it taken care of because they have the device, they have the Wi-Fi, everything is set. But what about those low-income families that maybe don't have a device, maybe do not have any internet in their house? Mm -hmm. How are they getting educated right now? Yeah, sure. So we, um, I think as we transition to, to this distance learning or at-home learning, um, one thing is clear, and I just kind of want to kind of level set, like, I know that every single family, regardless of income level, is is absorbing some kind of a stress right of now, course. right? Like this of entire course. environment is um, extremely um, stressful. Um, and so definitely want to acknowledge that. Um, there are families, though, um, however, to your point, who have already been living uh, paycheck to paycheck. Um, and so they were one crisis away from, uh, you know, losing everything. Um, and so that is typically the families that we are serving in Phoenix Union. And so for us, um, we are doing everything that we can to make sure that our students, um, one, have their very basic needs met, um, the food needs, um, and then of course their social emotional support, uh, but then the um, access to technology. Is, is a big, big component to that. Mm -hmm. um, and so we started at the end of March distributing laptops. We prioritized our seniors um, over the course of three days um, for our seniors, um, distributing, letting them kind of borrow laptops if they didn't have um, a, um, a device at home. If they don't have Wi-Fi at home, we purchased uh, 5,000 hotspots the school district purchased 5,000 hotspots to have um, um, as part of the technology distribution for checkout. Um, and then we also, once we got through seniors, we've also opened it up to our freshmen, sophomore, and juniors. Um, this week, that all happened last week. So now we're in, and of course right now the days and the weeks are all blended together, but I feel like we're in the third week of school closures now. Um, and so uh, this week we are um, moving into, or maybe it's now the fourth week. <laughs> See, all the, all the weeks I are know, blended together. I know. Um, but um, so the, the schools recognized that there might be some students who couldn't come last week. Um, and so they are doing additional days this week for the technology distribution. Again, very much um, in a grab and go style curbside pickup um, for that, the, the checkout and the distribution, making sure that our staff are wearing masks and gloves. Um, and when they're um, interacting with the, the students or, or you know, giving them the, the, the uh, technology. Um, so we're putting those protocols in place and, and trying to keep everybody safe. Um, but that, uh, that's definitely necessary for a district like ours. Yes, quite, quite an undertaking. And it yeah. really has to, like you said, it, you have to have it organized, but then you have to have the ability to adjust and evolve as we all move through this. So what, what help do you need, whether we're talking about the, the, the meal service, the free meal service, or just any of the, um, the, the, device, uh, the device giveaways and the areas to find those Wi-Fi hotspots? What do you guys need as a school district and how can yeah. folks contact yeah, you? Yeah, thank you, yeah. So the biggest need is really this, the digital divide issue. Um, we launched a partnership with the Phoenix, uh, uh, Greater Phoenix Chamber of Commerce, um, and they are working with um, some businesses here locally to collect um, uh, used laptops that the, if the community has used laptops that they can donate, um, they can drop them off um, uh, digital, I think it's digital doctors, and I'll make sure I get you the link. Okay. Um, after that can be posted uh, along with the, this podcast, but um, the they are collecting laptops. Phoenix Union will will uh, thankfully get the first 100 laptops uh, that the community donates uh, for our students, and then um, we also know that we have, like I, I mentioned, we have our our elementary partner districts 
who also uh, serve a very similar population, the same population that we do. Um, and some of the districts don't have at the uh, resources, you know, the bond and override dollars that, that our Union High School District has. Um, and so we are going to leverage this partnership with uh, the Phoenix Chamber to make sure that our, our um, elementary students, if they need the technology, um, can have access to it through this, um, you know, public-private partnership. So and we'd love the community to support with that. Sure, sure. And yes, and get me that 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 link that you were talking about because we will post it in the text uh, in the in the uh, the introduction <laughs> of this podcast when it goes out on social media. But what what's the, what's the website if folks just kind of want to get on and learn a little bit more, maybe volunteer doing something with the district? Uh, PhoenixUnion.org is our is our website. Okay. Got it. So Stephanie Parra, thank you so much for joining us here on Leading in the Moment. Um, you're, you're, you're taking care of your students and your families in this, in this tough time, in this challenging time. So we appreciate it. And again, we know things are changing as we speak. So um, we want to get your message out there and this podcast will certainly do that. So we appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay, Stephanie. And folks, we'll see you next time on Leading in the Moment.